Welcome to the News Review, I'm Press TV. Bahrain's main Shia opposition group says that the country is following a policy of intimidation and coercion to force some organizations into accepting the normalization of ties with Tel Aviv. The Al Wafaq National Islamic Society says that Bahrain's ruling Al Khalifa regime has threatened some organizations to show support for an agreement with Israel. A group of institutions has expressed dissatisfaction with what they refer to as blackmailing and coercive measures. Al Wafaq says that the Bahraini government has prohibited any popular or civil movements against the Israeli issue. Now, those comments came after the U.S. president announced that Manama and Tel Aviv would normalize relations roughly a month after a similar rapprochement between the United Arab Emirates and the Tel Aviv regime. So I will be having uh, a couple of guests uh, to shed some more light on this issue. We'll have Saeed Shahabi with the Bahrain Freedom Movement joining us from London, and Sabah's Ruhollah Rizvi, who is with the who is a peace and justice activist joining us from the Iranian city of Qom. Great to see you, gentlemen. Uh, over to London first, uh, Mr. Shahabi. This uh, is what the Manama regime has done, normalizing ties uh, with Israel. And uh, you have you've been aware of the uh, reaction by Iran and also the Muslim community and also even the people inside Bahrain. And now what we are seeing is uh, that al Wafaq and other opposition groups are being threatened and they are not allowed to do or say anything against this normalization. Thank you very much. This, these are bad days and black days in Bahrain when mm -hmm. the regime is acting against the wishes of the people, against the wishes of the Ummah, of the Muslim Ummah, the Muslim community, the Arab community, the Arab country, the Arab League. Mm, so uh, by establishing the links, resuming uh, diplomatic relations with an occupier is simply a crime as viewed by the people. This is why we have always opposed the, the occupation of Palestine. We have always sided by our Palestinian brothers. We have always opposed any aggression, whether the, the aggression was by Saddam Hussein on Iran or by Saddam Hussein on Kuwait or by the occupation of Palestine or, for that matter, the occupation of Bahrain by this ruling family. So we are against all form of opposition, uh, oppos uh, occupation. Uh, and we have uh, expressed our views. Our people have been in the streets over the past few days, the, uh, braving the uh, anger of the regime, which is now supported by Mossad. Uh, and we must not uh, forget that the Mossad chief was in Bahrain a few days ago to uh, lay down the details of the agreement with the Khalifa dictatorship. So we as Bahrainis have opposed this. We will continue to oppose it. Our people will always be part of the Arab and Muslim uh, community, and they will always side with the, uh, with the aggrieved, with the oppressed. And in this case, it is the Palestinians and the Arab and Muslim nations as a whole who are being targeted by the counter-revolution forces led by the Saudis, Emiratis, Khalifis, uh, Israelis, and of course, Americans. Now let me turn to uh, Mr. Rezvi. Uh, some of our analysts who I've been talking to, they believe that uh, by what Bahrain has done, it may actually pave the way for the presence of uh, the Tel Aviv regime and its forces you know, in the Persian Gulf region, and it could uh, stir the situation. But they also argue that this could also harm Bahrain's own security. Let's have your comment. Yeah, indeed. <coughs> First of all, my peace and salam to uh, Mr. Sharabi. They have been together in different events. Uh, uh, let me, uh, you know, recall um, a memory. It was 2010, a few months before the start of the Bahraini Revolution, when I had a chance of being uh, in Gaza with a group of peace activists. We went to Gaza with the first Asian caravan to break the siege of Gaza. And we had a powerful participation on behalf of the Bahraini people, just referring back to the same point mentioned by uh, your dear guest from London, Mr. Shah, uh, uh, <clears throat> Mr. Shahabi, that the, palace, the, that the Bahraini people have proved throughout the history that they have been always uh, in support of the Palestinian cause. And they have showed their support even when they were at the critical condition of the Bahraini revolution, when they were oppressed, when they were bycotted, when they were 
censored by the uh, mainstream media across the globe. And even at that time, I do remember when they were coming to the streets during midnight in different occasions, they were taking, they were coming to the streets, the flags of Palestine. I don't forget the, uh, you know, um, the images of the International Coast Day in Bahrain, in different cities and villages of Bahrain, when people were coming and chanting uh, in support to the Palestinian people. Meanwhile, they themselves were oppressed, they were imprisoned, they were killed, they were arrested, they were harassed by the al Khalifa forces in different events. And uh, I'm still, I believe that the sentiments of the Bahraini people, be them Sunnis, be them Shias, it doesn't make any difference. It's very clear. This is the sentiments of the whole Muslim nation, whole world across the globe. Their sentiments towards the Israeli, Israeli regime is very clear. And I think what Bahrain did was something totally expected. Uh, about your question, uh, about the possible presence of the, uh, you know, uh, Zionists in the Persian Gulf area. I don't think that's likely to take place. Uh, Iranians had a very, I mean, uh, powerful uh, response on that. And I, 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 don't, I don't believe, at least in you know, close future, it's going to take place in the region. But one important thing that we should not forget is that Bahrain has proved that the system in Bahrain, the monarchy ruling on, on Bahrain, Al Khalifa in Bahrain, they have proved that they are not independent. What they have done throughout, specifically these recent years, they have been always a puppet of Saudi Arabia in the region. So their stand actually reveals the stand of Saudi Arabia. So if we today observe that Bahrain is openly coming with the idea of uh, normalization of the relations and ties with Zionist regime, it's actually what Saudi Arabia, uh, Saudi Arabia is looking after. Uh, but because of different circumstances, they may not want to come forward, come forth uh, to the table, and they want to be the first pioneers of this field. That's why UAE and Bahrain have started this, this, this initiative. And uh, let's also not forget that um, this, this coincidence of what's taking place related to the normalization of the ties uh, between Zionist regime and uh, some, some Persian Gulf uh, countries with what is taking place in a general, I mean, um, image uh, in Western countries related to the insults taking place against the Prophet of Islam, against Quran, which I believe is a source of civilization conflict. I mean, the, the conflict that, 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 that's going to take place against the, uh, the Islamic Ummah, it has different dimensions. And I uh, do believe that there is interrelation, there is a connection, there is correlation between what is taking place in Persian Gulf region and the sort of, uh, you know, insults taking place, actually Western countries and Zionist lobbies actually behind them have got, have understood that when the governments are, uh, have, have lost their dignity, there is not, because Palestine was being considered as, as a symbol of dignity for the Ummah, for Arab Ummah, for the Muslim Ummah. And when they are in this cascade of normalization of relations with Zionist regime, it shows that there is nothing remains for these governments. Of course, the people, the nation, okay. they are suffering they're, they're with the Ummah and with the, with the, with the sanctities of Holy Prophet of Islam and Quran. But because there is no reaction on behalf of the government, they dare to insult to, right. to Quran, they dare to insult and repeat insults to, to the Holy Prophet of Islam as well. Okay, I appreciate your comments, uh, Saeed Shahabi. Uh, with the Bahrain Freedom Movement joined us from London and also we had Sarbaz Ruhollah Rezvi, peace and justice activist who joined us from the Iranian city of home with our comments on the issue. And thank you for watching this news review.